My name is Emmanuel Caruana. I am the brother of Martin Caruana. And my brother Martin is a quadriplegic. My name is Martin Caruana. I was born in Malta. We left Malta in 1964. Arrived in Australia in 1965. On January the 28th, Australia Day, me and my family went for a beach and in the afternoon I decided to dive off the pier the shallow water. I hit the bottom of the ocean and broke my neck. I was on the beach with some friends on a speedboat having fun and then when I was coming in I saw my mother on the shore shouting, Manuel, Manuel, come, we need you badly, come, come on. I said, what's the matter, man? He said to me, your brother Martin had an accident. I submerged, when I was submerged, I had the Madonna necklace around my neck. I said a prayer before I drowned. And the next thing I remember, the lady, giving me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. After 45 minutes, an ambulance came, took me to the Austin Hospital. Austin Hospital is a special hospital for those uh, quadriplegic, paraplegic. Uh, my father came out, my mother came out. My father started crying. I never seen my father crying before. And he said to my mother, woman, our son is not going to walk anymore. It was a shock to us seeing uh, my brother on his back with a collar around his neck and had some iron around his head. Martin spent 11 months in this hospital. Very painful, shocked for us, because Martin was healthy. The doctors told me I was 3-5 incomplete, they call it. I got some sensations in my body, but I was paralyzed from the chest down. I felt useless. We were trying to accommodate our uh, brother home. Life was different for us, changed completely. But somehow, day by day, family together, we managed to help each other. Martin, being number seven in the family, he was an always independent person. It's very hard to open. It was like that. He had a valiant, he had a car, he had a fiance, he had everything. But we never dreamed of this. We, we never seen, as I was saying before, not understand what a quadriplegic is all about. Don't even know how to write it down or spell it. But we managed. <laughs> My father, to my brother Martin, was not just a father, he was a friend too. My father decided to build a couple of rooms here, a bedroom and a shower and toilet and all that from our expense. 
By this time, my girlfriend used to come and visit me at home. After 10 months, we had to break it, we had to break our relationship. I was 19 years old by that time, and I couldn't offer anything. Anyway, she didn't want to leave, but I had to send her away because I had nothing to offer her. She didn't want to go, but still, I told her to go. When I returned home, I was weak and I prayed a lot, but I got really frustrated. I felt sorry for the family because I felt guilty by the accident. I became suicidal, but with the help of God, I got through it. It took me seven years to accept the accident, and after that, I, was, I spent my time praying, and the, the Lord gave me strength to carry on. From my experience, if it wasn't God there, I don't know how we couldn't survive. It took a long time for me to adjust. But being a big family, had my brother-in-law, we used to take it in turn and help each other. We managed. But after 17 years, the government helped us a lot. It was a little bit painful for my brother because to achieve this equipment from the government, my brother had to spend six months in a nursing home. It was uh, painful for him, painful for us. He was crying six months. But after that, government provided carers. After 19 years of my family looking after me, one day a social worker came to see me. And she said to me, I can get you an electric wheelchair if you find a vocation like going to university or to find a job. By the time I was 35, I went to university and got a Bachelor of Arts in Australian Cultural Study, Psychology, I spent six years part-time doing that. Then I got an electric wheelchair and I started going to church every Sunday. After that, I started going out with my electric wheelchair to the races, to the football, cricket, and started enjoying life here. And I started accepting life again. Martin kept the family together. Because I believe God worked in a mysterious way. The reason I say that Martin kept the family together is because our brothers and sisters, we used to come visit Martin and my mother. And so it became a habit. And we grew together. During the night, huh? I used to think about my friends, the things we used to do, used to go fishing and hunting. And I used to cry a lot and always pray to God to give me the strength to carry on with life. I used to spend my time spending in the garden when the warm weather came along. One day at spring, I felt emotional, deep emotional, like God was holding my heart in his palm. In his palm. Anyway, I saw the dew on the tree, which made me feel relaxed and happy again.
20 years. My family, I, I started getting the personal carers, which took um, frustration from, from the family, gave me more independence. I always thank God for the carers. Carers important for us, a big vocation, looking after my brother and helping us. He always loved and cared his carers more than us. But I could understand, and they did a good job. Things improved with medication and the bed and felicities, and was was um, getting better. My mother lived 93 years and eight months, and my father died young. My father died in 79, six years. A week before my father died, my father said to my brother Martin, Martin, I'm going and you're not going to see me anymore. But over the years, you manage. My mother was everything for us. Every day I thank God for my mother. mother did the Lord for us. Before she died, she used to say to my brother Martin, son, you've been a big cross to me. And God understands what I mean. And it's true. I don't know why this happens, but I believe there are always a reason for things happening. But this is God's mysterious way. I'm still hoping that I can see Martin walk again. Always said it, and I always believe it. But if it's not happened here, maybe when we die and go to heaven, yeah? This last 10 years now, it's been good too, because I got a brother of mine, the younger brother Ray, has got a beach house in um, Kay Patterson, that's after Philip Island. And Martin and I, we spend about a month in summer together. He's much happier uh, with, with himself now, being able to so they read, read the Bible every day. God was a big part. God worked in a mysterious way, but God sees everything, He knows everything, and uh, it takes His time. But the cross has to be there. I find that sometimes myself very, very hard to understand why our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Imagine it was me on the cross. I will never pray for those who persecute me. <laughs> like, I tell them, go to hell. But you understand what I mean? It, to show you how God's love, it was on the cross after that suffering, that forgive them. I tell people, what you gonna do to, I mean, car accident? Please look about these people. Try to not to come in this situation. Because if you ask me, I see this, it's a cruel world. It's a cruel world. But God is loving and just. But seeing people like my brother, young, and you end up in this, is, it's a big cross to carry. So. My brother was uh, accident, he jumped off the pier, was shallow. But for people drive too much or drinking too much, this must not happen. Uh, but I would say, Martin kept the family together. And uh, next year it turns 70, it's be 50 years, God willing. We, we are much, uh, Relax now. It's 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 um, it's ha very happy the way we are going now. After 49 years in the wheelchair, I started enjoying life again. Go go shopping by myself, travel by myself, live a practically a normal life again. Now I spend most of my time on the computer still reading the scriptures and 
and still going to church every Sunday. While I'm in a wheelchair, I used to ask God, how can I be a service to you? And he gave me the inspiration to go visit nursing homes and other people who are sick. But people like myself shouldn't give up because nothing is possible in life. And I took a vow that the accident wasn't going to defeat me, but the grace of God. I still go to church every Sunday, and I still keep praying the Holy Scriptures that gives me strength to carry on in life. I'm content with myself. I live a normal, practically normal life being in a wheelchair. God was always there, and it will always be. It was impossible, I believe myself, I believe that mind, heart, body, and soul, we could never, we could never do it without God's help. And for me, I was never thinking of saying it's a blessing. Looking back, I was happy on the journey, I mean, to be part of that. But I never saw it as a being blessing. It is blessing. God will always reward us for the carrying of the cross because I'm not the only one. <laughs> Many people before us over the century went through it, went through it. But you got to have God's grace in your heart to, uh, to accept that. During this time, I did uh, write a book about my life and all the aspects that I went through, the hospital, through the accident, home, churches, and university, and until this very day. is in a wheelchair, January on the 28th. After all this time, without God, I don't think I would have made it all this time. My family been everything for me. My brothers and sisters, with the support of my carers, that gave me all the independence that I need. Here I am living a practically a normal life. After the dive from the pier that day, Martin had not only hit the bottom of the ocean, but also the bottom of his life. Martin's brother, Emmanuel, who lives a single life, devoted his life to being of aid to Martin and their family. Today, he is the primary carer looking after Martin and their household. Emmanuel's life too is a story of triumph over suffering, for which he has drawn strength from Christ, whom he first served as an altar boy and now serves in his own brother. God's love story.